Welcome back to Coding Commanders. I'm Commander Candy, and today we're going to learn all about JavaScript data sets, including objects, index arrays, and JavaScript object constructors. You'll also find specific examples from a role play battle card game that we're making live on Twitch. You can follow me at Twitch at twitch.tv slash daisychaincosplay. Before we go into the specific example from the game, let's go to this page, JavaScript objects and constructor arrays. You'll also find the exact link to this lesson in the video description. So this page is on JavaScript data sets. What's a data set? A data set is a set of data, right? It's like when there's multiple items belonging to the same thing, like your grocery list has like carrots and like marshmallows and ice cream on it, right? That's a set of groceries that you need. So JavaScript data sets, there's different ways we could represent sets of data. Um, the two common ways are through arrays and objects. JavaScript is known for being pretty object oriented. I use objects for some things in JavaScript and I use arrays for others. I do like index arrays a lot with for loops. Those are really fun, fast, convenient. <laughs> I can loop through the world. There's some, on this page, there's some stuff linked that I think is helpful. The logic for programmers, cause like all this is based on logic. So if you go over the, just my simple little, it's like two videos. I did it for free code camp, introduction to propositional logic and, pro and introduction to set theory. If you just do those two videos before like doing anything with data sets, it's gonna be really helpful. When you're working with sets of data, you're going to need the key to unlock the data entry you're looking for. A key points to a particular value in a set. We use it to access the value that it's pointing to. It's going to be more clear when we get into an example. First, let's look at an index arrays because you know Fructus Hun loves indexed arrays. But um, an index array, if you just have an array, a simple one-dimensional array, and you just have data items, you don't name nothing, that's gonna be a simple index array. If you do not specify the names of your keys, they will be automatically indexed using numbers starting at zero and going up. So zero, one, two, three, and so on. Say we have an array that stores metal bands. Out of that set, we wanna access Slipknot. To access Slipknot, we can reference its key. Let's declare an index array called so metal. Bar so metal equals an array of Metallica, Megadeth, Slipknot, and Korn. In the above example, we did not specify keys. The elements contained in so metal are indexed. That means the keys are 0, 1, 2, and 3. So Metallica is zero, Megadeth's one, Slipknot's two, and Corn is three. I'm so metal, I have a PHP string tutorial with a black goat. Straight up, no. Access by key. Slipknot is the third element in so metal. So it's indexed at two. We can access its value with so metal, and then the two in the brackets. The key to Metallica is zero. The key to Megadeth is one. The key to Slipknot is two, and the key to corn is three. <laughs> Another variable data type that stores sets of data is called an object. JavaScript is pretty known for being an object-oriented programming language. An object's keys are often referred to as properties. Bar band equals name, Slipknot, type, new metal, best song, Custer. The object band has three properties, name, type, and best song. Okay, so it's not indexes, it's not like zero, one, two, it's name, type, best song. Custer, that's my song. Okay, access by property, you can access object by its properties. You do that using a little dot, see? Band, bar type equals band dot type. If bar type equals band dot type, then bar type is going to equal new metal. 
constructor. A constructor is used to define a certain type of object, and it usually starts with a capital letter. Go to codingcommanders.com slash battle cards where you'll find all the information you need about our RPG battle card game. Right here where it says battle code tutorials, click on that. It'll bring us to our JavaScript page. On this page, anywhere where you see one of these little arrows with the blue text, if you mouse hover over it, it will highlight it in the code block. Function band is going to be a function of name, type, and best song. Um, this dot name, so band dot name is going to equal the name of the band. Band dot type is going to equal the type of metal. And band dot best song is going to equal the best song there is by the band. So let's declare Megadeth, okay? We got our band constructor, and then we're going to say var megadeth is equal to new band because we're making a new band right we have our constructor that defines what a, what properties and methods methods is like a function attached to an object so our constructor can define what um properties and methods a particular type of object has and then we can make an individual instance of that object so var megadeth is going to equal a new band where this dot name is going to equal, so megadeth dot name is going to equal megadeth, megadeth dot type is going to equal heavy metal, and megadeth dot best song. I know a lot of people disagree with this, but this is like their most popular, I think, so I just put it because I thought people would have heard of it. Whereas, you know, even if they're not a fan of megadeth, they probably know peace cells, but best, so megadeth dot best song is going to equal peace cells print keys oftentimes we want to print keys or we just want to figure out you know what the keys are to um like print out or get a list of the keys the properties of um megadeth we could do var keys equals object dot keys megadeth so var keys equals object dot keys and then in parentheses, we put Megadeth, and then we can console log keys. And what we're going to get there is a list of um, the keys. It would say um, name. What was the second one? Type? Some kind of type. Oh, name, type, best song is what it would say if those are the keys. And you can have an array of objects as well. So in our battle card game, what a battle card is, is going to be defined by our card constructor. The parts of a battle card include name, that's the name of the card. Example, Paladin Hatnicks, that would be the name of the Paladin Hatnicks card. Or Priestess Jill would be a name of a card. Um, Sir Dialot, that would be another name of a card. Fructus Hun, that's everybody's favorite card. That's another name. Then image is going to be the file name of the image associated with that card. There's going to be a skill array, which is an index array of skill points. The order it's going to go in. Um, index that zero is going to be intelligence. Index that one is strength. Index that two is dexterity. Index that three is spirituality. Index that four is brutality. And index at five is diplomacy. Okay, Puddin? <laughs> Come on, Puddin. Don't you want to learn JavaScript with me? Broom, broom. Also, the last property is going to be alignment. It's going to be zero for lawful or one for unlawful. Paladin Hat, Nyx, Priestess Jill, and Sir Dialot are examples of lawful cards. Um, Fructus Hun is an example of an unlawful card. CD into websites. And let's make a new directory, M-K-D-I-R. Let's call it CC Battle Cards. Let's CD into CC Battle Cards. So this is our new project directory for our battle card game. Inside the CC Battle Cards directory, we're gonna do, let's do index, touch index.html. Now let's M-K-D-I-R. 
our database to make our database directory. Now let's do mkdir space js, and that's where we'll put like our JavaScript stuff at. That looks good. That looks good for now. Okay. You go to this page, you will find everything explained. I made an example out of Paladin Hatnix. Let's start off by defining our Paladin skill array. Each character class is going to have its own skill array. Paladin is a class of card. Any Paladin card is going to possess the same skills as Paladin Hatnix with the way we have our logic set up right now. And I think I want to keep it that way. So our Paladin cards have intelligence of 20, strength of 5, dexterity of 15, spirituality of 18, brutality of 5, and diplomacy of 10. Each of our skills will have a numerical value between 1 and 20. Think of it like a 20-sided die in Dungeons & Dragons. Now let's declare Paladin Hatnix, named after the king of Linux gaming, Hatnix. You can follow him on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Hatnix. We're going to declare him, bar Hatnix, is going to equal a new card. The card's name is Paladin Hatnix. The file name of the associated image is paladin-hatnix.png. The skill array we're using is Paladin Skills, and his alignment is zero, which is lawful. If you click right here, you can watch my awesome cartoon, which helps explain Paladin Hatnix's backstory. Thank you for watching my video. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to comment below so I can help you out. Also, don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications so you can take advantage of my free computer programming tutorials. And follow me on Twitter because I'm really funny. Thank you again for watching, and until next time, happy coding.